57 Chevrolet Day. Real shocker, right? Eh? Dan here, the East Beach Shop. So today, we're going to focus on this thing. Now, we have a bunch of sheet metal to weld into this thing. We have rockers for it. Uh, we have this rear kind of tail pan. We got a bunch of stuff to do. Floor pants are ordered, but we're actually not going to work in this garage today. Weird, right? Because that's where the car is. I don't want to cut and weld on this thing until it's on a proper chassis. Now, this one here, I don't know if I showed it or not, but it's all rotten on the back section. And the deal was, it came with a different frame. Now, yesterday, last night, my buddy Mike dropped it off for me because he's such a good guy. And this is what we have working the other garage today. But uh, this is a 57 Chevrolet frame. You can tell the difference because 57s have a cut end like that and 5s and 6s are kind of more roundy. This was someone's hot rod at some point. And allow me to show you. Someone welded in some sort of an ugly cross member. We'll cut that out. It's had, this is a very common thing. People weld off a uh, brace for the shocks. We're gonna cut that, that out as well. Tri-5s are very funny. They have a brace across the back and the cross member. That's it from factory. I do have a different transmission cross member which we'll put in there. The rear shocks, they typically run through the trunk and that is what we're gonna do as well. This is a pretty decent little frame. I believe it's a hard top frame because it has extra supports. So it's actually the right frame for that car. Now, this thing's had a couple of hot rod things done to it, which is kind of funny. As you can see, there is no provisions for leaf springs. Typically, they would have a leaf spring perch right there and right there. They have been deleted. And what someone has done, they've cut a section. Oh, look, maybe you can't see because of the light, but this here, she's torched out. Woo! So they ran the leaf springs inboard, and then I assume that's what that is, and they would have done a shackle and go forward. Now, coincidentally, that's what we're gonna do to this thing, except I bought a kit. Which has all these little bits and pieces. The main piece being this little sleeve, which you can, I mean, I bought this, but obviously you can just do it. We're gonna sleeve this inside the frame. So it's gonna look something like that in there. We'll have to, I don't know what we're gonna do here, because they welded, they welded some ugliness on both sides. Worked, I guess. And then. Where is it? This piece here will weld on top, and so the shackles can go under. Um, yeah. Typically, in most kits I've ever used, this one didn't have it, but you'll actually end up cutting a section out here and then welding it kind of back in, kind of like how a guy would do a, uh, like a step notch on like a C10 if you're going to lower it. So. We do have some stuff to think about that one. This thing only has one little whammo in the back, which we'll straighten out, but that's not structural in any which way, shape, or form. And then we have one of these fine Chevrolets to use as measurements. The back's all the same. It's just the front changes, and honestly, all the suspension, everything is the same. It's just different the front here for bumpers. Um, I like to do all that and then make it a roller. And then maybe on the next video or so, this will go under that, and then we can start doing sheet metal. So, huh. anyway, what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna set the camera up and I'm gonna cut out whatever I don't like. This stuff's gonna come out. We're gonna cut this stuff out, and then really the frame's gonna have to do a upside down, because it'd be a lot easier to weld that on the bottom side. When it's the top side, luckily I have all the batteries charged up, we're ready to go. So, let's get cutting.
Okay, so we got this old girl flipped. I just knocked out the uh, support there, and then I cut the tops of the trans cross member. We'll see if we can get the bottoms, knock that out, and we'll wire wheel it. I mean, we're gonna you know perfectly restore this frame by not touching it whatsoever. Anyway, these, this actually is in pretty nice shape. These tri fives they tend to kind of rust up in this area, which it's all good. There's no issues there, um, and they rot in the back. The other one was rotten. Uh, well, they rust there and there typically, I guess so. Junk just gets caught in it, but this one's a good shape. Now, what this does have, like I was saying, this is obviously what someone had done. You can see they plated it. So the front of the leaf spring would go in the frame and then this, they would just put some shackles and use that. Um, I took out the old measuring tape and I measured that chassis and where the eyelet is, on the the factory shackle is about 15 inches uh, oh yeah from that hole maybe is that what i did yeah so i kind of centered it up there and basically right there so this is in the right spot which is good now we just have to decide how we want to modify it with this piece so ultimately we're going to mount that on the top just like that. We'll then cut out a section of this frame. We'll box it in. That'll be fine. Up front here, this probably works, um, but definitely this is a lot more sturdy. So as you can see, we're gonna kinda basically line that up, slice the top of the frame out like they already started. So give us a head start. We'll slide this in and then weld it. And then basically all we're doing is recreating what it has here. It's just double wall thick. And it looks better than being clearly torch cut, stuff like that, you know? I mean, we're, we're low brow here, but when you have the parts, you might as well use them. It's been sitting in the basement for six or eight months. I bought this, oh, well, maybe not that long, for the Nomad, because I ran big honking tires, and I was concerned I was gonna hit leaf springs, and ultimately we had all sorts of room. So I'm hoping if we put the leaf springs in, we'll put the wheel tubs right up against the frame. That should give us, I think it's two and a half or three inches inboard. So in theory, we should be able to fit like a 12 or 13 inch wide tire in the back, if we so choose. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys or not yet. I think I did in the last video, but we're gonna do that. And then we have uh, uh, that one, that 10 bolt, which it's hard to kind of tell me. I mean, kind of looks a little shorter. That should be two inches or an inch and a half narrower than a factory tri five. So it should be a pretty good little mini tub. Anyways, I'm going to get planning on this. We'll set the camera up. Ultimately, I don't, I might cut these tab. Well, I might cut the side tab off. We'll see what happens. I might just drill these out actually. On the factory, what there is, is these are two, if you can see in here or not, but they're two big holes because you'd have uh, the leaf spring would actually be on this side. Yeah, on the outside of the frame. So you'd have a big hole to get the bolt through or the nut through and run it all the way. And then right here, this might actually, you know what, this might be the factory perch now that I think about it. Cause this doesn't look like it's as ugly welded. So this might stay, but you have the factory perch and then it would be like a big, well, it would be this, right? So what they probably did now that I'm looking at it, they probably just torch cut that off. So we'll leave that one. This one is like bubble gum, ugly welded. So, but it's in this brace. So you might just drill that one out and uh, kind of go from there. But that allows us to put a big bolt in there and we should be fine. And even no matter what we do, if we oblong those or whatever, these are not gonna be, that's what I'm saying. So it's gonna be centered in this, right? Start cutting, see where we end up. All right, well, let's get this stuff out of the way. I'll kind of just talk you through what I'm gonna do here initially. The first time I did this, ah, I did it from the bottom side with the body on. Yep, that sucked. So now we can kind of mark, put that about ish where we think it's gonna be. Now we're only cutting the top here, you gotta remember that. So let's eyeball, eyeball, eyeball. So that and that now, hopefully we're at the right angle for the camera, but it's actually, we're gonna cut kind of right on the around the edge. We want to have it just so it rolls in a little and then we'll have it 
kind of pretty close. We should be, should be okay. So I'm gonna cut that, zip cut as per usual. See if we can get it fit in, obviously without the wire wheel it, get all, or grind it, whatever. Make it nice and clean, cleanish, clean adjacent. Cause you know, expert welding, obviously. And it slips right in, it's actually a super easy kit. I think it's used to be like popular mechanics or something like that. Dodges do it, everybody does this. Inboard chassis. I have all seen guys where they'll, um, what will they do? Oh yeah, they'll knock off this mount and they'll take this mount and put it on this side. And then same thing over here. So you can really move everything in, but you're not really gaining any more wheel tub access the way I see it because the chassis is still there. Okay, so we got her kind of set in there. I just put a piece of all thread. It's just half inch bolts. I might have overdone it by a half inch or so. So I'll have to weld something in there. Um, that's as far down as it goes. It does hit the, the frame. So this is one of them Chinese kind of bent up. It is what it is, but I can actually pull it out and I'll, I'll clean up the weld a little bit there or I could grind it down, whatever I want to do and weld it in real nice. Um, yeah, it is kind of irrelevant how it's in there. I mean, really, this is in there square, as far as I'm concerned, square-ish. You have the rubber bushing, so it's gonna be a little bit of flexiness anyways. Um, we have our bar going through, so I'll probably do the uh, same over here. Looks like it's pretty close. Uh, I'll cut that side out, make sure everything fits good so I'm happy with it. And then uh, we'll probably just put a tape somewhere, you know, find a hole on the frame or something on each side, just so we know these, these line, these two uh, holes, I should say, sorry. Are, are roughly the same from something, you know what I mean? Or, or exit or do whatever. Because again, we know this, I measured both these. This one's a little bit of a whammo, but this being 15 inches from that bumper bolt. So if this is, I mean, well, there's a hole right there on both drain holes. So if we can do a little measurement, if that's, you know, three and a half inches, wherever it's gonna be on both, then good enough for me. So I'll get that side cut out real quick. Um, we'll place that in and we'll see exactly what we kind of have. Then it'll be buzz that in. And then we're going to have to box in the, the rear frame after we do a little bit of measuring. Okay, so slight change of plans. I ended up cutting the little plates off the side. Uh, I looked at the other card, so obviously there is its own uh, hanger, so this is just a big hole. So I put it in there. I measured both to this little hole, so they're kind of centered up side to side. Um, yeah, I think it'll work out just fine. I got a bit of a gap at the bottom, nothing too crazy. So I'm going to weld these in. I'm confident with them. They're they're goofy. They don't fit the same. And if you put them side by side, they're not the same <laughs> either. So whatever. It's going to be what's going to be. All we really care about is this hole is centered, and the rest of this is just space for the leaf spring to have some travel. Right. That's that's its center line across. So a pretty uh, simple deal. And then we can start to hacking out this back section of the frame uh, with the mark at the bottom, so we know where center is. And then unfortunately, I don't know how much I want. I probably only want to cut half of this out. So I may have a little whoop de doo I'll have to weld in or do something. And I got some uh, miscellaneous plate. I think we'll just kind of put that in there. We might, I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll, we'll figure that out. But anyways, let's get the welder out. I think we got gas and all that stuff. We'll get it kind of tacked in. Then we'll just burn it right in and it'll be just fine. What a lot of work, cutting and grinding and screwing around. And, ugh. On the inside actually, I just left the plate because it was, how are you gonna get in there without taking the motor or the, the body mount off? So I just drilled it out and then I used my little uh, little sander and oblonged it so it'll be fine. So now everything, this box piece can be welded to the frame and then everything's be bolted right to it, which is, you know, as you can see, it's, it's way thicker than the factory frame. So 
she's sturdy, and I did one car, I guess, I don't remember which one, but, and everyone's done a million times over. Leaf spring cars. Okay, let's get the camera up, start welding. Okay, so we have the leaf spring in. Um, I've actually found some instructions online and where it wants, sort of put it, this, this mount, it wants to be 57 inches from the eyelet, which we're basically there. So you have to remember this thing is upside down. So this has to go like that and be welded on. Unfortunately, the problem we run into, this thing is a two-piece frame. So as you can see, she got a little wiggle. So there'll be some ugly welding involved in that. And then this, let's just see if we can get a few things together here right quick. So this is just gonna work exactly like a stock deal. Of course, these bushings are terrible. China. <laughs> Pretend there's a bushing. So we have that, now you have to see this be your strap, it would go there. So, um, as you can see, there'd be no room for that leaf spring to go anywhere. So that's why we have to cut a pocket kit in here. And the kit didn't come with one, so I think what we're gonna do, I looked on some guys on the internet, they kinda do it right where the frame starts to widen for the that back cross member. So I'll kinda go back there, I don't know, four or five inches either way, cut it out. We'll go about halfway down, plate it, and be done with it. Before I do that, I'm gonna clean this up really good. I'm gonna clean the bottom of the frame, and I'm just gonna tack it, center it and tack it in a few spots, just so it's kinda of held there in a little bit of extra strength. That, and the frame's not gonna fall apart, there's no weight on it. And then we'll cut out <clears throat> whatever section we wanna do here. The the kits come with this one, it's got like a Got like a fancy little swoopy piece and all that. I think we're gonna go square because that's a lot easier to recreate. And yeah, we should be able to weld that in. And then the leaf springs will be in. Then it's a matter of, I didn't buy U-bolts, which I wish I did. Weird, just started charging out of the blue. Creepy. Um, I wish I had some U-bolts because the charging, the charging station. Uh, if we had, we could, well, we'd flip it over again put the rear end in and then put U-bolts in it, then it'd be a roller. The kit actually came with uh, perches, which is kind of nice. So we're gonna have to just put this in. Ah, the right side. Try five, two inch wide springs. So that'll go on just like that. I still gotta clean the other rear end up, but it'll sit in there. Then we can just give it a couple of tacks and some U-bolts just so it'll roll. You know, we'll set pinion angle at some other uh, time down the road but yeah I'm hoping Danny said dinner's in one hour so if I can do that in an hour and then eat we're good ugliness this is this is a lot of work but it is nice doing it upside down the last time I did this I was on my back putting it in which was terrible with a body on the car so not bad so the camera will start time lapse in it heaters on sorry Anyway, this is the design I'm gonna do. Uh, I did some measuring, I looked at some stuff on the internet and what other people have done. So we're gonna cross across this kind of hole. Originally, I actually went up a little bit before it, but we're just gonna take it out because it's easy and kind of do that. 
Um, the plan is I'll cut that, cut that. If I cut it down the center, then I can flip it over here and trace to that side and have my whole piece cut out and then we'll, you know, whatever, we can use that. For the other side, uh, I have a strip of steel. I'll uh, fold that in there. We might do it in three sections. We'll see how it goes and, and weld it all up and then we have our mark here, and I marked on it, I mean it's 57 inches, so we can do it again. And I was gonna tack it in, but you know what? It'd be way easier if we get it all done here, flip it over, and then weld it from the top side. So that is what we're gonna do. So let's get cutting and uh, see where this ends up. So there we have it. The you know the PC by would have been all bent and where we got ours welded in, but well, our little C notch so that the leaf spring can now leaf. Uh, I'm gonna take a break for supper because it is supper time. All my batteries are dead. We'll come back out, we'll cut that one in, and then I think that's it. We should be able to flip this thing over. I guess I might try and cut out a few more things if I need it, but realistically, we should have it back as a roller tonight. Actually, I was looking out here, I think one of these dips had a couple of U-bolts on it. Oh, U-bolts, but no, no nuts. My life, we'll see what we can accomplish. I like to get it kind of together, ratchet strap or whatever, and flip it over at night, but yeah. All right, well, I bought, uh, both sides taken care of. Actually, you know what? This is kind of funny. So this is how they uh, <laughs> they they put in the the leaf spring originally. Piece of water pipe with a bushing or, or I don't know what that is. Piece of rubber in there. And uh, you know what? So I was watching Morsky's last video. I, is it even a video when it's three hours? You know when you're watching. You know you remember in school when the teacher would bring in the old you know TV on wheels. Actually, fortunately, a lot of you guys are older. Maybe it was on the reel to reel, and you're like, "Oh, right on. This could be pretty good." I get a you know break, and you got to watch this terrible show that just drones on and on. I don't know why I had that flashback feeling of old Morsky repair three hour video. He calls me a hack. I mean, come on. This is like, I mean, I'm a hack, but I'm better than that. This much. Well, I don't want to show you the world too much. That much better. Anyway, we'll hang that up for future i think at this point this thing can be flipped over again that's always fun to do flip it over we can weld on the perch on the top of the frame because again this thing is upside down i then got uh we're double fisting we got a dr pepper and a glass bottle cola mexico um and we'll 
I got those. I got a block kit, two inch uh, block kicks. I do want to lower this thing and I'm a sucker for these. This is like a Camaro kit, I think is what I get. Anyways, it had U-bolts in it. That was the real thing. So hopefully we can snag that rear end in. I got to cut off the mounts, the Nova mounts. I actually have a plasma cutter I got from that uh, uh, Western saw, great Western saw, and I hardly ever use it. So I should blast those off and then grind it real quick. And then I should be able to just kind of hang this all together um, with the mounts and all that, but nothing will be welded. Just kind of clamp it, maybe give it a tack. And then this thing will be kind of a roller. It'll be pretty sweet. And then we can uh, stuff it under that 57 Chevrolet. And hopefully that floor and the mounts and all that come shortly. So I would like to uh, get that taken care of. Oh, I still got to cut the, the top off here. I'm going to cut these mounts off while it's here. Oh, it's not even... Yeah, they did some of it. I'll get those off. Then we can always clean those up after, but we might as well get this all done before it's under the car. You know, I'm fighting if I should cut these off. Really no need for them, but we'll just leave them for the next guy. You know, it's, it's a factory original car we're talking about here. Big dollars at Barrett Jackson. We're right side up again. Um, so I cleaned everything up and I just kind of marked this a little. Whoa, it's fine. I uh, cleaned this up. Now the situation we run into, so we have a two piece frame. So one side's be off the ground a little bit. But you know what, that's gonna, we're gonna go ahead and say it's fine. So I'm gonna just center it up, kind of eyeball it, make sure she's straight. We'll give her a couple of really good tacks. And then here, we'll just kind of fill her in. We'll do that on both sides. Um, you know, I, I marked it there and there. So just as long as it's kind of close. Leaf springs and bushings, let's be honest. Close enough is good. Uh, we'll make sure they both match side to side, but I'm not really too concerned. Um, yeah. So let's set the camera up and we'll just burn those in real quick. It's gonna be pretty simple. And then once that's in, we can hang. Did I lose a bolt? Damn it, I thought I had one in there. Anyways, we'll hang the front of the leafs. Then we can drag that rear end in and set it. Well, I guess I gotta clean it up a little bit. Set it in there. Put it in i mean this thing will be a roller it does actually roll the one the one wheel does spin i think this one i don't know if it does oh yeah or mint so put a couple of tires on it or four four wheels and tires on it and we should be able to slide it on slide it on over i think i'll do it in the next video there's uh because i do want to you know while it's off i'll grind these little bits of slag off the transmission mount stuff uh the mount i have will fit actually on top of the frame everything else it looks pretty decent and uh, don't worry I'm not gonna paint it I want this moss on the frame to match the moss on the chat on the car itself right <laughs> uh, sorry guys Well, we got my well did put a pile of heat to it. Look at that, looking for a hack job. It's not a bad, bad bunch of wells, eight more, So, ooh, that's still hot to the touch. We're gonna let that cool off and we can slam the leaf springs in the front 
Meanwhile, we have this 10 bolt. So this has this kind of goofy uh, Nova deal. So it actually would have a couple isolators to fit in there and at least we can go in between. As I recall, it's welded on the edges and there's four spot welds. So, looks like Mr. Plasma, I think we'll be able to blast the sides of it out, get kind of the big meat of it away. And then I'll kind of go over and we'll just clean, uh, clean everything up with a grinder, um, obviously a new axle pad. So they kind of have to fit on there and do their own thing. Oh, I cut the... Oh, we're doing Tri-5 stuff. Who cares? Really, the parking brake cable, it's easy. Um, it has brand new brakes. All the internals are new. Everything is new, other than the diff itself is old as shit. But uh, for what we're doing, being full-blown posers, the DD Speed Shop way, we should be okay. So I'm gonna get this thing dialed together. Uh, plasma cutter, might as well start using it. And then push it in, drop it down. I think I'm gonna leave it for a night. We might finish up tomorrow, put some wheels on it, do a little bit of cleaning. I did a little bit, oh my, the old man knee. I knocked this down. We gotta fix all this stuff up. I just, when the body right here is the rearmost uh, body mount. So it's pretty important that goes there. But you can imagine how ugly this was because the trunk floor, like it's almost touching. I don't know if you have the recessed trunk floor. I don't quite remember what I did there, but uh, no. There's a bushing and then there's a little bit of yeah, a little bit of structure. So it must be hauled tight enough it goes over it, I guess, just barely. I guess we'll find out, whatever. But uh, anyway, so I did this with the body on. You have to try it. This wasn't too bad. You're lying on your back, which is terrible. But here you have to clean up here and then try and weld in there. All in there. Like I'm I'm a bad welder at the best times, let alone when it's upside down underwater and it's cold out. So yeah, we'll get set up. Blast this rear end apart jam her in there and have ourselves like a pro street looking kind of deal it won't be pro street but i want a big tire on it i don't know why i won't have any power and it costs much more money but it's only a good plan to me Look at that, we're in. You know how you've been having a lawn light? Not charging, overheating, not charging, overheating, not charging, overheating. Well, we got one, she's going now. So when they're all too hot to charge, you know, even giving her. So we should be able to, uh, I'm getting pretty tired myself here, but I'm gonna hang the leaves in real quick. Just the fronts let it drop, push this in, drop it all the way down put the shackles and all that on. I think we have all the hardware for it. It should be a pretty simple deal. Actually, you know what? It might not have all the hardware now that I'm looking at it. Might be missing two bolts. Because it only has four. My mathematics say we need six. Uh, let see what I got next door. Otherwise, we'll just jam some all thread in there for the time being. Change that later. And we'll slap together. I don't know how emotive I am. We might just kind of leave it for tomorrow. Because I... I do want to clean up the rest of this chassis, fix that little back bit, you know, while it's here, knock that all straight, weld it, grind it. I mean, that we care about. The rest of it, who really cares? Yeah, and then all my front suspension is still coming from eBay. Um, being in Canada, though, it's saying like bidding in November before I get it, so that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I don't know what we have on the other side. This one's got no center link or anything. It does have a steering box. I don't know. I don't know what I got. I got to go through and just kind of see. We're, we'll have enough to get something done, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this old girl now. Excited to get it all together and start welding the panels on, because that always is fun and goes quick, right? So it's kind of nice. We're doing like metal fab 
and stuff I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Hopefully it likes metal dust and all this stuff, eh? Okay, so we got the old girl up in the air. Honestly, everything looks pretty straight. Uh, you see the leaf springs are, whoops, like centered-ish in there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this rear end in. So we're gonna put blocks on it, so pretty simple. Take a block, put down the locating pin. This is gonna go under the diff, and then it'll kinda look like that. So essentially, we're lifting the rear end up two inches, which in turn will bring the car down. So it will be lowered. So I have two inch drop spindles in the front. We'll put these two inch uh, drop blocks in the bag. It's like mini truck stuff. Um, came with these U-bolts and some uh, nuts. So we'll kind of put that together. I clean these up. I, I might just give like a quick ugly tack, but again, the, the pinion angle needs to be set with the weight on the vehicle and all sorts of things like that. We're just literally making it a roller for right now. So, set the old girl up. Man, the GoPro battery's at 19%. Like everything is just fighting me. Okay, so step one, kinda eyeball it in there. That on that. Oh God, lift your back. Okay, got one side done. <coughs> Go over here. Oh, I should have put this on first. Oh, no, not bad. Okay. There we go. Oh, almost enough, but not quite. Okay, so that's the rear end. That's where it's going to live. Where did I put my tape measure? Whew. I'll just take a break. Oh, yeah, there it is. <clears throat> now, again, you can't... First eyeball, we'll go off the leaf spring real quick. Nothing's really tight or whatever, so that's just under six inches what we got on this side. Backing plate, five. So it's gotta go this way a little bit. So we'll say like, ooh, five and a half-ish. Five and a half and two ticks? You know you all measure the same way as me. That's, that's what I do there. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just kinda put it back to where it was and call it a day. That's five and a quarter. With the leaf strings being all loose and everything's all kinda cattywampus. Eh, five and a quarter on both sides. We'll call that livable. So now, oh. I don't know if I have the bottom plates. When do you try five ones? I have try five ones, but where the try five ones are? You think a guy who's done this a zillion times would have put that together, eh? Oh, I had, uh, I had some in the welder. That's where I store my stuff. One. Oh, oh yeah. We got two. We're good. See this right here? If you think you're getting a good deal, but you don't have these, where are you gonna get these from? You know what I mean? That's all, we'll call it being a collector. But if you don't have this stuff, trying to put a car together becomes extremely expensive. There we go. That'll be perfect. Okay. We'll get those started. See if we, well, 
have to time lapse this while the camera's plugged in. We'll come back. There we have it, eyeball together, I eyeballed, eyeballed. It's not quite on the ground. It, I mean, there's a little bit, but you can see it's got some suspension, it does its thing. The rear end looks somewhat square in it. I'm happy with it. Um, that's really it for tonight. Tomorrow, after work, I'll grab some bolts to secure the front together. Like the, the leaves can be all bolted in, that's fine. Once you get a little weight on it, they're fine. Bolt those in. The rear end, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, it's in there good enough. We'll kind of clean everything up, clean up the garage because we made a hell of a mess. But that's a lot of progress to get done in one night from like 4:30 when I'm coming off work, stop for a break for dinner, and now it's 10 o'clock. I think it's not too bad. And uh, yeah, I'll put some wheels on it. Gotta get some studs, a few little things like that, or uh, lug nuts. Maybe I have some somewhere. Hopefully, I have some tires. Man, junk tires. What a hassle. Put those on there. We can uh, wheel it around with the tow truck maybe. And uh, the next video will be swapping chassis. That'll probably be tomorrow. See how it goes. Uh, we gotta figure that all out, how we're gonna get lifted and all those sort of things. But I am confident we'll figure it out somehow, some way. But uh, that's it for me tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. New day, just got home. Uh, dug these out of the basement. These are a set of front runners I had. I've had these on a bunch of different things. They're a set of, supposedly, they're rally wheels with a set of Volkswagen hoops. So, like, they're only like four inch wide or five inch wide deals. So, we've got some like little trailer tires on it, you know, front runner for a gasser style thing. We're gonna run them on the back, which won't look cool, but it should roll, which is all really going for. Um, I picked up some grade eight hardware, so I just kind of got that started. Uh, the goal is we're gonna put the wheels on, lift it up, put a little bit of weight on it, just so it's got something, hammer all these tight for now, and kind of go from there. After that, I do want to, I guess, do that one little patch at the back, get that bent straight and welded, and then just grind off the transmission cross member marks, and the one little, uh, for the Z-bar. I don't think this thing's gonna be a four speed, so we'll kind of zip that off. Not the end of the world, I mean, the firewall, it's right here on a Tri-5 Chevy because these front mounts are under the hood. I think everything else is pretty much that's the way it's going to be. So let's just do this in one seamless motion. Oh, so hang on. Steven Spielberg doesn't know what he's got competition with, but there we go. So we'll lift this up real quick. Man, this little hoist makes life so much easier. I highly recommend, if you got the room and a few extra bucks, just for junk like this, man. Ugh. Okay, let's get this rolling. Let's see where we end up. Okay, this thing's pretty much ready to go. Um, you know, ground down what it's gonna ground down. We'll see if we can just kind of straighten this out with a pair of vice grips a little bit. Not that this is a super, super issue, but nice to have it all kind of decent. Might need some ear schmuffs here for my, protect my ears. Um, 
Man, this frame's actually in nice shape. Most of them are all jacked right up. This thing, the lower control arms are bent, which it's like every tri-fi I've ever. Smack this back into place here. Ooh, that might need a little bit of heat. Got a bit of a kink there. Yeah. yeah. In the, the day, it's flat here. That's all that really matters. Uh, future dam. We'll take care of that. So you know what present dam is going to do? He's going to see what this thing has for some suspension travel. Allow me just to drop this down. A little slow, and there's not a whole lot of weight on it. Oh, it's also strapped to the table. Guess I can undo that. Hang on. We don't want any. This will jack the suspension up. Oh, it's perfectly balanced now. It doesn't even fall off. Look at that. Who would have thought? Mm. We got this out of the way, too. Man, this is good infotainment today. Here we go. Okay. In theory, the weight's on it. The spring perch should be kind of centered ish. Which it kind of is. It's not bad. You guys see all that? Oh, yeah, actually, like vertical. Oh, yeah. What's going on there? Oh. I didn't change the bushings and the leaf springs, but that'll be fine. So I think that's where we're going to leave it. Get in there. Everything's pretty good. Well, it's touching the leaf just a little bit. Might need a spacer, but that'll be fine, or the frame, I should say diffs in just enough to tow it cleaned everything up like i said the front of the frame usually gets all mangled on these things they uh you know, one tow hook there not bad there lower control arms have eh? oh yeah this one look at that every tri five lower control arm smashed but yeah i think that's where we're gonna leave it for this time i'm gonna back the tow truck up we're gonna lift the front of this thing and tow it around and then put the front end on a dolly and push it under the car. But what we have to do first is start the next video, which will involve me jacking the body up off the existing chassis with blocks and jack stands and ugliness and all sorts of stuff. So that should be fun. But then we can set it down. I think I have some body mounts so I can do the back because the trunk was decent and maybe a couple on the front just so the car is the body is setting because right now the body's set all kind of cattywampus well you know what if only we could walk over and just show you the vehicle at hand but this is my plan anyways so it's all just sitting kind of funny but if we can get it yeah there's blocks of wood holding this thing up wherever there's floor if i can get i thought i had some somewhere it must be in the basement a couple of blocks just so it's all the same. Even if there's hockey pucks, it doesn't really matter. But as long as the car is sitting square level-wise, then we can put the rockers in, do all that sort of stuff. But next video, we'll strip this thing right down, make it as light as we can, hoist it up, swap the frame. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, if you're looking to do a like a mini tub or a, you know, a, a, a chassis like this, this is basically the same whether it's Chevy Dodge Ford. You know, move the leaves in and however you got to do it, you can do it. Very simple setup, a little bit of work, a little bit of grinding, and depending on how you're gonna mount it, having the body off is nice, but what a task, what a task. Thanks for watching. Do me a huge favor, comment below if you haven't already subscribed, I would appreciate that. Allows me to continue working in the garage on pure garbage for my entertainment, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.